and we are live. Welcome to the fourth part of the Friends of the Page Walkers uh, celebration of the live stream celebration of the Cary's 150th birthday. So happy birthday, town of Cary. It is today, 4321. It's Cary's 150 years old today. Um, I am Michael Rubitz. Today we're going to talk about 10 minutes or so about the history of education uh, here in Cary and something of a vision that the founder of Cary, Frank Page, had. Take a quick look at some of the Cary milestones that are noted here on the sign. The first public schools established in 1840. Cary Academy, which we'll talk about quite a bit, was established in 1870. And then in 1896, Cary High School itself was established on this site. So let's move over toward the school, get a view of the school. We're on the side of the schools. We head up. Let's get away from uh, Kildare Farm Road here where it's a little more quiet and we'll continue. Now, as you've heard from a lot of the other live streamers, this is the 150th anniversary of the founding of Cary. Uh, Cary's uh, founder, Allison Francis Page, Frank Page as they call him, in 1854 purchased about 300 acres of land from the Jones family and with the idea of establishing the town of Cary. First thing Frank did was set up a lumber mill. He was a businessman. Second thing Frank did was set up a general store. Frank was a believer in several things. One of the things Frank really believed in was education and educating the youth. Here's a start with a picture. This is from later in life. There's Mr. Frank Page. No, Frank. So when Frank uh, purchased the land in 1854, again he said it was a half acre. I mean, a half mile north, south, east, and west of the train station that sits. Uh, just south of the Page Walker now. So as one of the other live streamers mentioned, where we are now at the school was basically the southern edge of town. This was it. So by 1869, Frank had already established where the school was going to be. He donated the four acres of land that the site sits on now. And as he called it, it was, it was the highest elevation in town, had a nice stand of uh, oak stand of trees. And Frank, being a lumberman, was able to take the trees down that were on the site and use those trees to construct the very first school. Now in the fall of 1869, a year before the school opened, Frank ran this advert advertisement in one of the local papers, Cary Schools, A.H. Merritt was the first principal, will open a male and female schools at Cary. Notice how they were still spelling Cary with an E at that point, which was not the way it was intended, it was just a mistake. On the 12th of January next, 12th of January being 1870, his scholarship and experience in teaching will make them first class schools. Now what's important to note was that this was a year before the town itself was actually founded. Frank was uh, head of the game there. And the school that Frank built, this is a, a view of the actual, is a two-story, four-room school, two rooms on top, two rooms on bottom. This is a, a great drawing by local artist Jerry Miller as part of the 100, 100 year anniversary of the founding of Cary High School back in 1996. Yep, let me put this in here. Now, this is actually, to me, it's kind of an interesting part from, there's a newspaper article in 1875 that I want to read a short excerpt from that described uh, the town and the school. And it gives you a good idea of what Frank had in mind when he built the town and the school. And this is from, again, 1875. And it says, talking about Cary, it is a moral place named after one of the great apostles of temperance, General Samuel F. Cary. It has observed the consistency of its origins by a rigid adherence to the principles of temperance. All of its inhabitants are teetotalers from principle, if not obligation, and prohibition of the sale of liquor in the village is a fundamental idea. As a junt to its morality, it takes care of its churches and schools. It has two of the former, a Methodist and a Baptist. And of the latter, it has had one in operation about two years. Talking about the school now, the seminary is a commodious and comfortable edifice, furnishing good accommodations for a large number of pupils. Boarders are under the care of the principal and an elegant house provided for the purpose on a lot adjoining the seminary. The assistants, which were the teachers, are not only competent for work, but also apt to teach. Instruction is given in all the branches which are required for a thorough and finished education. The school is divided into three semesters throughout the year. Board and tuition are payable in advance. It's one of the interesting things I think about the school was that when it was started, it was a boarding school. 
astute parents that could afford it would send their kids to this private at the time private school to, to get instruction as so by the 1880s Frank had moved on from Cary to Southern Pines to finish making his uh, fortune in the pitch uh, pitch pine forest down there in Southern Pines the uh, Jones family controlled the school for a while then in 1896 the town of Cary itself actually got together a board a group of investors and purchased the school and officially renamed it Cary High School so in 1896 it went from Cary Academy which what Frank had called it to Cary High School here's the interesting picture of an actual photograph of the school and you'll notice that wings have been added to either side of the school throughout the first 30 or 40 years of its existence the, the town expanded quite a bit one of the principals around the turn of the century that had a lot of influence in the development of the school was principal Middleton who was a former uh, president of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and was principal from 1896 to about 1908 he expanded the school greatly and under him and say in the year 1900 the school had about 250 uh, students in school and was the largest employer in town however the undoubtedly the biggest thing that happened to the school while uh, professor Middleton was in charge was that in 1907 Wake County purchased the school from the town of Cary and incorporated it as the first public high school in North Carolina so Frank's vision of the town becoming uh, an education educational school was largely coming to fruition in 1907 it became the first public high school in North Carolina here's a great picture showing more expansion of the school this is from 1912 you see that the school has expanded more there's now wings uh, on additions to the wings uh, on either side a big change that happened to the school in 1908 was that uh, Professor Middleton retired and moved on to a, a, a job of he really liked opening a Baptist uh, Sunday school Baptist uh, schools Professor Marcus Dry became principal in 1908 and that's a job that he would hold for 34 years until he retired in 1942 and there were a lot of changes that happened when uh, Professor Dry was in charge the first big one was that by in 1907 the same year that the Wake County approved buying the school to make it Cary's first public school the local citizens in the town approved a bond to tear down the old wooden school and replace it with a brick building this is that original brick building that was built and they approved the bond in 1907 1907 the school construction started in 1913 I'm sorry and was finished in 1914 the brick columns that are sitting out front were actually added in 1916 and if we turn around those are all that remains of that original 1916 building but they're still here in fact they've got the cornerstone in the front there from 1916 so for the next 25 years or so Dr. Dry is in charge and there are a lot of changes that happened in Cary during that time the town was electrified electricity came to town phones were added to town a big change that happened in the school was in 1927 while Marcus Dry was still principal for the first time kids were bused to the school so we now we've got kids from not only we've got residents boarding school from all over the East Coast we've got students local being bused in now the depression hit 1929 obviously Cary like many other towns were hit hard by 1933 Cary high school was no longer taking borders it was only students being uh, brought in on buses and the second big occurrence happened in 1937 while Dr. Dry was still president or principal as part of the WBA program the old school was torn down and the school that we see here today which is the Cary Arts Center was built in 1938 at the dedication ceremony the North Carolina Secretary of Education remarked that Professor Dry was the only educator in North Carolina who had worn out a schoolhouse because he was principal when the first brick one was built in 1914 1915 and then president or principal when this one was built the, the 19 
50s was really the last heyday, if you will, of it being Cary High School. Here's a good picture that shows what the campus was like. This was in 1952. And you see here at the front, there's the what's now the Cary Art Center is there. Let me go like this. There we go. This was what was the girls' dormitory. And when they stopped taking boarders, it became uh, apartment housing for the teachers, single and married. Over here was the Walter Hines Page Vocational Building, the boys' dormitory. There was a vocational building, a gymnasium. And what's really interesting is there's a very low building, a little L-shaped building there in the back. That was actually where the elementary stu students were. Because even though, again, it was called Cary High School, it was grades 1 through 12 were, were students here. By 1960, the high school was even outgrowing this location. You had all the grades here. And so Cary High School moved to the current location down on Walnut Street, which was considered then pretty far outside of town. By 1970, the junior high had also moved out of here and was over at what is now West Cary uh, Middle School. So by 1970, it was just the elementary students that were here. And that only lasted till about 1996 when the last students were taught here after about 128 years or so of teaching and buildings on this site, they moved to what is now the Cary, El Cary Elementary School, which is just behind this school. Uh, and we're, it's, out, it's still an active elementary school. Frank had this vision uh, of the town being this industrial and commercial kind of center along with an educational center. And while the commercial and that part of his, his vision didn't work out, Cary has long been known for hundreds of hundred years. Cary has been known as a strong city of education, and it still is today. So I think that, that pretty much wraps up what I had here. Remember, please go to the Cary150.org website. There you can register. If you've got a story about living, growing up in Cary, you can record, you know, write an article there, record the story, write an entry. That'll be saved and archived. Everybody should go tell their own story. Like others mentioned, there will be the concerts tonight. Uh, happy birthday to the town of Cary. Um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, get out, light a candle, wish Cary happy birthday. Happy Saturday. Thanks.